Hello and welcome to Tala Talks NICU. I'm Dr. Tala and today we have another screen recording of abnormal x-rays you'll see in the NICU and you should get used to recognizing. That was a really long run on sentence. We are so happy that so many of you are here from outside YouTube and being directed here. So while you're here, please remember to like this video and to subscribe to the channel if you're interested in overall neonatal content. I'll say this again, medicine is all about experience and the more you see or do something, the more comfortable you'll feel. So go out of your way to look at all x-rays on your patients and eventually you'll get very, very used to reading these. So let's start with this abnormal chest x-ray. The chest x-ray was sent in by one of our wonderful viewers, Celeste Crane, who did get permission from the parents of the infant. So by the way, if you have interesting x-rays or images, please send them to us. So the history here is this. This was a full-term baby delivered after an uneventful pregnancy. The baby started grunting and was having mild retractions at about one and a half hours of life. He was taken to the NICU for observation. The grunting stopped, but the baby got cold and began to intermittently desaturate to the 70s. An x-ray was ordered and they found this. So what do we see here? And I know you can all read even if you don't recognize this. So this is a pneumothorax. Can you see this dark rim of blackness on the right side here? And remember, we read x-rays as if the patient is looking at us. So obviously this is kind of the right side and this is the left side. As you all know, a pneumothorax is when the alveoli or lung tissue pops and air escapes to collect in the pleural space, which is basically the space between the chest wall and the lungs. If the air continues to build up at a rapid level, it can cause collapse of the lungs, and if it's really bad, this increased pressure will stop venous return to the heart, so you can also end up with hypotension. This is called a tension pneumothorax. So we always have to decide what should we do to get rid of a pneumothorax. Watch it, hoping that the body will just kind of absorb it, or put a catheter in and drain the air. In this case, they treated him very conservatively. They put the baby on a nasal cannula, they never actually put in a catheter to drain the air, and eventually it went away. The baby is completely healthy now. Thank you so much, Celeste. So this is another x-ray, again, with a right-sided pneumothorax. Again, you can see the outside contour of the lungs and then the blackness around the lungs, which is obviously the pneumothorax. The most common reason for a pneumothorax is RDS, or just basically positive pressure use. I do want to emphasize something, and that is that looking at the x-ray is really half the picture. You can't tell how badly the pneumothorax is affecting the baby until you're actually looking at the baby. So sometimes a radiologist will like look at an x-ray like this and will read it as a tension pneumothorax, which as we already said, it means the blood pressure is now getting affected. But really you cannot tell this from looking at the picture. A tension pneumothorax is a clinical diagnosis. In this case, the pneumothorax, as you can tell, is large, and you can see that the air is pushing the mediastinum all over to the left. So even here, you can see the endotracheal tube is being pushed over to the left. Clearly, this infant would be affected by this. You can see that this chest tube has been placed, but for whatever reason, it doesn't really seem to be working. Despite the chest tube, we still do have this large pneumothorax. So in this situation, maybe the chest tube is clogged or it's kind of stuck up against the pleura because, and that's what's kind of stopping it from working. Right, moving on to this chest x-ray. What do you see here? Yes, a congenital diaphragmatic hernia. A lot of these are diagnosed prenatally, but every now and again, you'll get an x-ray on a newborn with respiratory distress and you'll be shocked by this. So a CDH, as like I know you all know, is when there is a defect in the diaphragm, which is the muscle between the belly cavity and between the chest. And this hole in the diaphragm allows the organs, whether it's the intestines and the stomach, maybe the liver, to actually migrate up to the chest. Most CDHs are on the left side. And the problem isn't just that the intestines are in the chest. The area of the lungs don't form well when all the intestines are in there. But not only is this lung not forming well, but then all of this kind of pushes over to the right side 
and the mediastinum gets pushed over to the right and then often even the right lung isn't formed well as well if you do have a left-sided CDH. But here you can see very clearly this kind of bubbly appearance of these intestines here on the left and you can see that the stomach is at the level of the 10th rib and all this extra pressure is causing a mediastinal shift to the right with compression of the right lung. And another picture of a CDH. Again, here you see the gastric tube curving around and ending up in the chest. Again, you see more intestine going up on this left side. This baby is intubated, obviously, as you would expect, but here we don't have as much as a shift to the right which hopefully would mean a slightly better prognosis. Hopefully it would mean that at least these lungs on the right side were well made. These babies, as you all know, can get super sick. They can present in severe respiratory distress. Also, often these babies have scaphoid or really skinny empty abdomens because the organs have all migrated up into the chest. And this is a picture of a right-sided CDH. Often with a defect on the right side, the liver can act as a kind of barrier and stop the intestines and the abdominal contents from migrating up into the thorax. This is not the case here. Here you can see the intestines throughout the right chest and you can see that the mediastinum has been pushed over to the left side. So here you can see the endotracheal tube is kind of going over to that side as well. The Gavage tube here is still in the stomach and this kind of looks like it is in the correct position because again, this was a right-sided CDH. Let's move on to a pleural effusion and I'll give you a little history here. This was a term baby born at 37 weeks known to have trisomy 21 or Down syndrome. At the delivery, the infant required some positive pressure ventilation for poor respiratory effort. He was admitted to the NICU on CPAP and this x-ray was obtained. You can see all this grey curvy line over the right lung here. Can you see how the costrophrenic angle is obliterated? So you can't see the angle of the diaphragm and the ribs like you can here on this left side. Then you can see that this effusion goes all the way up. This is a really big effusion. When it was tapped, it was found to be chylus or fluid that was originating from the lymphatic system. Congenital chylus effusions are super rare, but they are slightly more common in infants with trisomy 21. And here we have another effusion. This was actually a case report in a journal. This baby girl was born at 31 weeks after the mother went into preterm labor. The baby was struggling at birth and intubated and given surfactant. Eventually, the baby was weaned to CPAP, but on day five, she started getting worse again, needing more oxygen. They got a chest x-ray and this is what was found. Again, we see this right-sided pleural effusion. Again, you can't see a good angle between the ribs and the diaphragm. This baby was actually found to be COVID positive and the effusion was thought to be secondary to this. The effusion slowly absorbed over a few days and the patient's condition steadily improved. What does this x-ray look like? The mother of this baby had polyhydramnios during pregnancy, which means she had loads and loads and loads of amniotic fluid. After the baby was born, he had loads of oral secretions. They attempted inserting a gavage tube into the stomach, but it got stuck and wouldn't go any further. So you can see here, we have an esophageal atresia. So the esophagus just has a blind end. The other thing that you need to notice here is that there is no gas in the belly. Otherwise, the heart and the lungs otherwise look pretty good. So what about this chest x-ray? This infant also had copious secretions at delivery. And why do you think a baby would have copious secretions at delivery? Because the baby was unable to swallow the amniotic fluid. It was getting stuck and so it was building and building up around the baby. Again, a nasogastric tube was inserted but met resistance. So obviously here it's kind of curling up. A chest radiograph showed the catheter coiled in the esophagus at the level of the second vertebrae. But what else do you see here? There is air in the stomach. So what could be happening here? This suggests that not only is there an esophageal atresia, but there's also a distal 
tracheoesophageal fistula. So the air is going down the trachea and then taking a shortcut through the fistula into the bottom part of the esophagus, which allows the air to reach the stomach. From a prognosis standpoint, this can be good or bad. Bad because we're worried that air will keep collecting in the stomach without any escape. It can't go back up through the trachea and obviously the esophagus that is giving the air to it has a blind pouch on this end so it's not going to go back up the esophagus. So if this gets really really full this could cause the stomach or intestines to perforate. But on the good side of the prognosis generally if there is a fistula there then the bottom part of the esophagus is better formed and there's a higher chance that the esophagus could be brought together in a primary operation. So in one operation, just kind of grabbing the bottom and the top of the esophagus and just kind of stapling them together in one. And that's actually what was done in this patient. The fistula was ligated, so the shortcut between the trachea and the esophagus was ligated, and the esophagus was connected together in one operation. This baby actually did great. You can look at this and tell it's just not a good chest x-ray. The lungs are small and very white. So what is going on? Maybe you'll have a better idea with some history. This x-ray was taken of a two-day-old male who was born full term. He was diagnosed prenatally with autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease. So the kidneys are massive and you can see this really protuberant abdomen which is so big because the kidneys are so markedly enlarged. And then, as you all know, when the kidneys don't work, they don't produce urine in utero. And so these babies normally don't have any amniotic fluid surrounding them because as you all know, a baby needs to be peeing well in utero to have a good amount of amniotic fluid. If there is no amniotic fluid, then the lungs don't develop and they end up being very small and hyperplastic. And this is what has happened here. Small hyperplastic lungs, which often have this kind of bell-shaped chest that you can see here. This is a really bad prognosis. All right, so what do we see here? Obviously, there's some whiteness in the right lower lobe. And we can't see immediately what it is. Is it a collapse? Is this an abnormal structure here, like a CPAM, which we'll talk about a bit? Or maybe it's even a CDH, a congenital diaphragmatic hernia, with a part of the liver poking through, or the liver kind of causing a barricade from letting the intestines through. Or is there something abnormal about the diaphragm? Well, in this patient, a three-week-old, ex-30-week infant, the baby started having worsening respiratory distress, and so they got this chest x-ray. This whiteness was just not improving, so the team got an MRI to evaluate what was going on. The MRI showed that the whiteness was indeed the liver, so after that it was suspected to be a CDH, so that there was kind of actually a hole in the diaphragm and the liver was going through. But when the surgeons went in, they found a diaphragmatic eventration and not a hernia. Remember, the diaphragm is a muscle and it can be made abnormally too. And that's exactly what a diaphragmatic eventration is, a disorder where the diaphragm has an abnormal function and structure. And because it's looser, like it's just a floppier muscle, it gets displaced higher into the chest. So here, the diaphragm is doming higher than it should, and this is the liver actually under it. Surgeons perform a diaphragmatic plication to fix this. Basically, they go in and they suture the weakened part of the diaphragm and pull it downwards just so that the lungs can open up easier. Generally, this is a successful surgery. So again, you can see how much higher the diaphragm is on this right side as compared to this left side. This x-ray looks very similar to the eventration x-ray. Again, you see that the diaphragm is much higher on this right side than on this left side. So again, are we missing a CDH or is this an eventration like the last x-ray? The history may give you more of a clue here. This neonate had a difficult delivery because he was so big. After the birth, the baby wasn't moving his right arm and was diagnosed with an herbs palsy. The infant also had a respiratory distress and so they got this chest x-ray. 
Knowing that this infant has had a brachial injury on this side makes a diaphragmatic paralysis more likely. And this normally happens after a traumatic delivery where the nerve roots get damaged. Remember, Herb's palsy involves damage of the nerve root C5 to T1. And the phrenic nerve, which as you know, innervates the diaphragm, originates at the C3 to C5 nerve roots. So you can see how an Herb's palsy and a diaphragmatic paralysis could be associated. So the way you can differentiate a paralysis with an eventration is by getting an ultrasound of the lungs. If there is a paralysis, then the diaphragm won't be moving appropriately during inspiration and expiration. Either it won't be moving at all, or it will be moving in an opposite way it should be. Depending on how bad these symptoms are, these babies may also need a plication. Now look at this next chest x-ray. Immediately you can see this kind of like weird cystic mass in this right upper lobe, really going down to the right middle lobe. So I'm going to cut to the chase here and tell you that this is a CPAM, which stands for a congenital pulmonary airway malformation or a CPAM. This used to be called a CCAM or congenital cystic adenomatous malformation. A CPAM is a congenital abnormality of the airway. They are connected to the tracheobronchial tree, so the cysts with them are filled with air, and you can see that. They can be made of tiny cysts or huge cysts. CPAMs often present in utero, and sometimes they get so large that they kind of block all the drainage, the venous drainage, um, back to the heart, and this can eventually cause high drops. Other times, CPAMs will peak in size during the pregnancy and then start getting smaller or involuting. After the baby is born, even if the infant doesn't have any symptoms, the baby does need to be followed with x-rays and probably a CT scan. There is some risk of the CPAM developing into a cancer or becoming infected, so eventually all CPAMs should be removed even if they're not actually causing any symptoms. And that's the end of this video. We really hope that you learned something. In the meantime, please remember to like this video and subscribe if you're interested in neonatal content. And remember, if you do write us a comment, please let us know where you're from. Thank you so much for being here.